Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, bringing you another video to today. Aren't you lot lucky? I'm joined uh, by Lawrence Booby. How you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Yeah, not good. too bad. Not too good, bad. Good, good, good. He's a Man City fan. Look, look. I brought a shirt. I actually brought the old shirt as well, one of the older shirts. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the show, guys. We're going to be debating uh, something uh, that we've had lots of discussions about over the mm. last few months. Uh, Arsenal's invincible team. How do they compare to Manchester City's Centurions now? They don't really. <laughs> End of the video. There we go. Um, so we're going to have a little debate around each position. Let us know what you guys think, of course, in the comments as well. Uh, your feedback is always welcome. Let's start with the goalkeeping position. Um, where are we going with that? I, I think mean, Edison offers more than Lehman. I think he came in and changed the side more. He hasn't made his... I mean, Lehman in his prime made that massive error in the Champions League final. Edison's not really done that. I think Edison is more critical to the way we played. I, I, I think you could have stuck you could have stuck Peter Schmeichel in his prime in the Invincible side, and they they still would have got the the Invincible record. But I think Edison, we wouldn't have got anywhere near 100 points without Edison. Do you reckon? There's no, no keeper in the world where we'd have got 100 points without him. I think that when you look at um, Edison, number one, that tattoo on his neck is shocking. <laughs> he doesn't even deserve to be in for that. Um, but I guess what you're saying is that Edison is more pivotal to the way that Manchester City It depends what you, if, you, if, you, if you want to compare it in terms of who's just better in their prime or if we're debating the actual Invincible versus Centurions who was more important to that re respective season it's, it's however you want to do it mate it's your channel I, 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 <laughs> I think I'll give you Edison yeah on that basis and, and there is a debate to be had around whether he was Lehman, 25 as well mate he was 25 yeah. and, and there was a debate to be had whether Lehman is even Arsenal's greatest goalkeeper of the Premier League era so um I'll concede that I'll one. Take that. You can have Edison. There you go. <laughs> Let's move over to the right back position. We're going to go with a four four two. Agree? Yeah, if you want. Yeah. yeah. Four, well, four. you were four four two invincibles, yeah. Yeah. Because we're four three three. So I don't know if you played four three three at points. Do we didn't, I mean? but we can shoehorn. The team Let, all right, let's just be flexible in midfield and see what we do. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. see. Let's see what we can. <laughs> um, so okay, for me, right back invincible Lauren. Um, there's no debate in that. I mean. Who would you put forward? Well, obviously, Carl Walker started 95% of those games. Um, I mean, Carl Walker changed our side massively. Really great signing for 50 million quid. Great deal in terms of the value for money for what, what he's brought. But, yeah, Loren, would Loren... In, in, would we have got more than 100 points with Loren at right back? Potentially. Yeah, he's that. he was that good defensively. He was massive as well. People forget how physically big he was. So, yeah, 100% uh, Loren for me, yeah. Loren as well, we're agreed. And, and the fact that Carl Walker is ex-Spurs means he wouldn't even you be considered it. on you this channel. <laughs> so, uh, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll move on from that one. Uh, let's move into the central defensive uh, positions. Who Arsenal. were your starting centre? Was it Colo Torre Colo and Sol Campbell? Colo and Sol Campbell. Um, for me, Colo Torre was good and, and he had great moments, but... He had a mistake in him at times, yeah, Carlo Torre. Yeah, he did it see. And I feel like, you know, it's a, Sol Campbell, it's not even a discussion between those two. So for me, I'm sticking Sol Campbell in there. Easy. Um, it's tough. If you want to be accurate, I mean, the, he was playing, he played in the Centurion side, of course he did, but he didn't play many games company. So I could throw him in there and just be like that. Or I could throw in Laporte, who came halfway through the season and was brilliant when he first joined. So it depends how you want to, want to do you want to be empirically accurate? Because yeah, the Cent I think Centurion we side... It's like saying, who's your backup centre back? Like, si, si, well, who's a Saigon? 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 Oh, don't, don't give Pascal, me Saigon. Pascal Seagan. Seagan, yeah, but he was he was technically invincible, wasn't he? But he didn't start yeah, any games. Yeah. Company was a, was an invincible, but he did, um, was a Centurion, but he didn't start many games. So what do you want to do? I'll leave it over to you, mate. You're the Man City guy. <laughs> um, Who do you feel? Do Stones you feel... started the most games. Stones and Otamendi started the most games. Now, I, we can't be serious and have a serious discussion if we're going to put Otamendi and Sol Campbell yeah, together. Agreed. We can't do it. Now, agreed. I'll throw company in there. I think he played just enough games, but he was always injured, uh, and unluckily for that season. But when he came in in big games, we kept clean sheets, and that's why we got 100 points. But you've so. also got to consider that the influence that company had off the field as well when in the dressing room, and mm -hmm. that, for me, probably makes up for the fact that he maybe didn't play as many games as yeah, some of the yeah. others. Um, so okay, centre backs. We're going to go. Sol Campbell, Vincent Company at left back. Arsenal had Ashley Cole. Who would you say? Well, who was? Well, we have Fabian Delf. Oh Jesus! <laughs> who, by the way, relative to the fact that we got hundred points in the season and he was at left back, that shows you something. I mean, would Ashley again with Lauren and Ashley Cole? Would Ashley Cole have helped us get more points and maybe even win the Champions League that season? Yes, he was that good, of course. So yeah, I mean, Fabian Delph, obviously no question. Mendy, when he did play, was class. And Mendy, if he hadn't have had the injuries, and if he stayed for five to ten years, the legacy in the Premier League, he might actually be discussed as nearly as good as Ashley Cole. 
but it's highly unlikely that's going to happen. So, so Ashley Cole, you get your guy in there. Yeah, Cash <laughs> so that's there. that's three Arsenal defenders out of a back four. That is how you know that we're discussing something from 15 years ago. <laughs> we're doing that. Uh, let's move into. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's move into the midfield. Um, for me, the, the the one player that I would insist is in there would be, of course, Patrick Vieira. Um, fantastic leader, yeah. inspirational leader, top top footballer as well. Up and down constantly. Um, made a mug out of Roy Keane on multiple occasions, which Course. automatically makes him an Arsenal. Yeah. And I'm sure a City legend as well. Yeah, well, when he joined, yeah, he couldn't even run the guy. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. So, so I, I'm going to go Vieira. Have you got any sort of players that you... Well, Fernandinho played there, and he was class. Um, I can't sit here and say that Fernandinho is better than Vieira. I think there's a point to be made in terms of respective to each other's campaigns. He was as important to Vieira, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, he point. was definitely as important as Vieira was for Arsenal. But... Um, would I take Vieira in his prime over Fernandinho? Obviously, obviously, I would. Do you know what I mean? I'm not a complete mug, but he was that good, Vieira. Uh, world class, 100%. Yeah. What about Yaya Toure? Did you, did you stick in there? Wasn't at the club. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, yeah he left. But the season before, people forget, he actually helped us get secure fourth. And he helped that transitional phase under Pep. Yaya Toure was there. He scored some big goals. Um, so yeah, never never discredit. I always yeah, I always get yeah, mixed yeah. up with when he left because I just remember the birthday cake incident. What a load of nonsense that yeah, was. Yeah, about twenty fourteen, I think twenty thirteen. So. Oh, Jesus Christ! Yeah, that was a bit embarrassing. All right, so we're going Patrick Vieira. We're going Fernandinho. No, no, we, I, we can't we can't include it. I don't think. Are you not going? I'm just, no, because I think we'll have to put De Bruyne in there because we're playing four four two. Do you know what I mean? So let, let's. So one defensive it. midfield like in the CM, and then De Bruyne has to be in there because he played midfield. Uh, at points, De Bruyne actually played deeper than Fernandinho and to drop back and get the ball and play long balls and stuff. So De Bruyne basically did play centre midfield and you have to put him in for the season he had. Okay, so we're going to go Patrick Vieira, Kevin De Bruyne, then no Easy. Fernandinho to confirm. No, I don't think so. Okay, cool. And that's because, <laughs> let's get it clear, that's because you feel that De Bruyne was more important to Manchester City that year or that Fernandinho yeah. is not as good as Vieira? Yeah, because of that that defensive side of the uh, the defensive part of the midfield has to be held by Vieira. We can't have two defensive midfielders. We've got to be expansive, mate. Do you know what I mean? In our yeah, team, we have to true. be expansive. And <laughs> so De Bruyne created every opportunity. Um, obviously, the following season, he was injured all the time, and we still managed to maintain that level, which is in, shows you a lot about our side. Uh, but De Bruyne that season was just unplayable at points. Unplayable. Cool. So that's that's what we're going with in the middle of the park. Let's go on the right flank. Yeah. Arsenal had Freddie Lundberg playing out there predominantly. Um, hmm. Good player, maybe not a world class player. Um, had his moments, made a lot of important contributions yeah, yeah. to the side, important goals at crucial times. Who would you put forward for that position? Bearing in mind that you've used Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah, exactly. In the yeah, I think Sterling because he actually played he played a lot on the right. Uh, and as Sterling got better and, and he, he sort of uh, staked a claim in the starting eleven for Guardiola, he got moved to the left. But he started for Guardiola on the right uh, as a sort of more of a natural winger. So I think, you've got to put, I think Sterling's best season in the Premier League is better than any Lundberg's best seasons, in my opinion. I would agree. In terms of individual contribution, as goals and assists, a bit younger than Lundberg. You know, Lundberg was in his prime in the Invincibles. Sterling's not even hit his prime yet. Had a better, he has a better ability as well to beat a man. I feel yeah. um, more tricky, a little bit more technical. Hundred um, percent. Lundberg had an engine, but it was more about hard work with Freddie Lundberg for me. Yes, he had the awareness and the brains to get into the right position. Class, don't get me wrong, but but yeah, I, I would I'd concede he, that. Like Lundberg Sterling. was never getting rumored to go to Real Madrid, but but Sterling's always been yeah. you know Real Madrid and all these guys. So. That's kind of the benchmark, isn't it? When when Real Madrid and Barcelona are linked with boys. players, we say 100%. they're top, 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 top. Um, It's like when Spurs fans go on about Harry Kane. Sorry, if Real Madrid and Barcelona come knocking for Harry Kane, I'm still waiting. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, think that's, I think that's just the price tag, mate. An English striker in form, I think they just can't afford him. I, don't I think, think he would have gone by now. I, really? I genuinely don't think he's that's, quite, that's another video. That's quite interesting. I genuinely don't. He's not even marketable, is he? Like He, he looks like... He is because he's so good, mate. No, the he's, in the pudding, he's just like, can you just imagine, you know, you see like, <laughs> when someone signs for Real Madrid, you see all those glamorous videos where mm. they go out on the Bernabeu pitch and they do their kick-ups. You would, to, you would worry about him doing yeah, kick-ups, yeah. wouldn't you? Can I'm not you being funny, he's got Can he even do top. five kick-ups? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can he even count to five? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, okay, so we've got our, our right midfielder, which is Raheem Sterling, centre midfielder Patrick Vieira, Kevin De Bruyne yep. on the left-hand side, Arsenal's uh, star was Robert Perez. He was an incredible player that was his very peak at Arsenal for me he's got to go in there would you come back at that and who would you come back David Silva way better way better individually um, 
the season he had, I think, is, obviously we can talk about that later, but I think what Dava Silva achieved uh, in terms of in the Premier League era uh, is actually better than Pires. Obviously, one more Premier League than Pires. I think Did he's he better have... at more things. His game, I think his pass and range was better. Not as pacey as Pires on his day could actually beat a man. Dava Silva never, never could. But Dava Silva, you know, had that long strike on him. His technical play, his ability to keep the ball un- unparalleled. And, and people are talking about... No, no, no one ever says Pires is the best player in Arsenal history. No one ever says that. But David Silva is considered the best in our history. I, I, I'm, this, is an Arsenal, <laughs> this is an Arsenal channel. So I, I might have to overrule you. I might have to overrule That's you. That's not very democratic. You're right. <laughs> purely, purely on the basis that do Arsenal... In terms of their individual impact on the team, Manchester City, Centurions, do they still get close to that level without David Silva in your opinion yeah oh sorry no they don't no, no they, they don't. don't his season arguably actually I mean if we're talking just about those seasons um, I think Henri got you through games Burkan got you through games you obviously said about Henri getting you through games before like David Silva's arguably, arguably best season is when he shaved his hair off he was bold in the Centurion season uh, I sort of remember it for that reason. <laughs> I think he was more aerodynamic. Yeah, that's why I think when players go bold, I think they they they, they get this focus. Do you know what I mean? They're not worried about their hair anymore. <laughs> like, yeah. um, but he was unplayable. There were goals against. I think he scored against you lot in one of the games. He scored against Huddersfield. He's, I think he scored against Huddersfield. He scored some massive, massive game, uh, uh, goals. Um, he scored about four or five in a row, which he's never done before. And he was getting on in terms of his, his age. Ten years in the Premier League. I mean, Perez only had what. Five, six years. I just think that Robert Perez was, in many ways, the platform on which Thierry Henry mm. became the best player in the world. And I say that because the, the link-up between those two was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. And what you would often see was when Henry was maybe getting marked out of a game, you'd see Perez receive the ball and drive inside on his stronger right foot, yeah. of course. And that would open up channels for Thierry Henry to mm. run. And I think as a combination, they were so good... I'm going to have Thierry Henry in the team, so I might have to go with Robert Pires here. Okay, you, it's your channel. You go for it now. Right. I'm, I'm quietly... I'm, it's, like, it's like an election. I'm just going to vote for someone else, and you can just overrule me. Do you know what I mean? I'm just going to sit here. It, no way is Robert Pires better than David Silva. Oh, I'm going with Robert Pires. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> and uh, we'll give David Silva an honourable mention. Yeah, you course. can be the first and, sub 60 minutes in. And when Pires does his knee in again... David Silva was switch it in. <laughs> um, right, so that's what I'll, we're going to go with. So the, the midfield four, just to confirm, we've got Kevin De Bruyne on the yep. right. No, Kevin De uh, sorry, yes, De Bruyne, Re- your boy Vieira. Yep, Sterling uh, on the Sterling right and David Silva. I mean Perez. Perez on the left. <laughs> Perez for clarity. <laughs> uh, Robert Perez. There you go. Up front, um, for me, I've already mentioned him. Thierry Henry. Easy. No debate in it. For me, the greatest striker the Premier League has ever seen. Mm. Um, at one point in his career, he was, in my view, the best player in the world. Yeah. Therefore, no debate. I think your invincible season doesn't happen without him. I think our Centurion season, I know Aguero scored a ton, ton of goals. I think we could have had a different strike. This is a very controversial thing to say. I think we could have got 100 points without him. We played that well. We created so many opportunities for midfield. It was classic Pep where... Bernardo picked up eight, nine goals. David Silva had six, seven goals. De Bruyne had six, seven. We were spreading the Sane. Yeah. All these players had different goals. Uh, with, with, I feel like you didn't spread the goal. Henri took 30 goals in a season. But Aguero that season, I think only scored about 21. Yeah, so think, there's a little debate about, I think Henri was more pivotal for your season than, he, than on, uh, Aguero was for us. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think with Arsenal, you always used to get 10, 12 out of Robert Pires. You might get seven or eight out of Freddie Lundberg. But the, the majority of Arsenal's goals uh, were from were from Thierry yeah. you didn't really get that many from Patrick Vieira no. didn't really get that many you didn't get any actually from Gilberto the defenders maybe you get three or four a season yeah, exactly. the centre halves yeah. coming up for corners but that was about it so, but, but the thing is our side scored more goals than your invincible side and that's why I think the Centurion's debate is better that's why our achievement's better than yours because you had 12 draws and we had we had more points points matter more than draws yeah but we didn't get beat <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to hang on to that forever we didn't <laughs> get beat you did in the Champions League doesn't matter. And you did in the League Cup. Are we talking you about did the, the FA Cup? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I think if you ask, all right, if you ask uh, Watford right now, bottom of the Premier League right now, what would you rather have, more draws or more points? Obviously, they'd have more points. But, <laughs> exactly. but it's just it's got it matters so, more in the league. To be able to say that we won the league, yeah, going the season unbeaten, just has a nicer ring to it. It does, yeah, it does. But then also, you know, it, you didn't win anything else, did you? We no, won the League Cup well, as well as got 100 points. 
and then got yeah. 98 points, which is a two. What what happened after after your invincible season? It didn't go so well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, for, yeah, look, I mean, if they were to have a one-off game, two sides, yeah, who wins in your opinion? City. And not because oh suddenly I'm just going oh all our players are better than yours. It's n- none of that. It's, to be honest, if you look at our eleven, I think it's mostly Arsenal players, isn't it? I think it's about six to five, yeah, roughly. Yeah, but it's, it's a, close, isn't it? Yeah, it's close. Yeah, it's very close. We, our peak game, you wouldn't even touch the ball. You wouldn't even touch the ball. I would argue that physically, yeah, you can. We so. would bully you. Yeah, you, but you wouldn't touch the ball. I think football is that it's more important. Do you know what I mean? It's more important. There are some sports, like let's say tennis, for example, you can be a bit of a nutritional tennis player. And the player who can uh, play the offensive shot the best is always the best player. Sampras, Federer. In football, you can you can be the best defensive side. That only lasts for a certain amount of time. Whoever's the best offensive side, whoever's football's an offensive sport. And we, we were better than you at being offensive. We scored more goals than you, create more chances, always a higher pose- possession average than the, the Invincibles. So in the big game at Wembley, and we've got, we got Vieira running around, he wouldn't even kick a ball. Wembley is our second home, though. You do know that. Oh, well, yeah, well, yeah. No. <laughs> it's an interesting debate. We will never know, for real, 100%. <laughs> um, because it's never going to happen. Unfortunately, charity never... match. Yeah, we'll do I it. Mean, it'll be good, wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> maybe me and you could play as well. Yeah. Uh, I'll play left back, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll never really know, but of course, two of the greatest sides the Premier League has ever seen, 100%. there's no question about that. Um, two of the greatest managers the Premier League has ever seen, mm. uh, some of the best strikers, some of the best midfielders, two great clubs and even though you're only there because some geezer decided that he wanted to pump his billions into well, weird, yeah. I mean you signed wait you so you spent money on Vieira so you signed Vieira obviously yeah. for about 500 grand no you, you still spent money on him you spent money on Henri yeah about 12 million pound I think no, you, so you signed who, you signed Sol Campbell well, obviously yeah <laughs> Sol Campbell <laughs> was free Sol was Campbell oh, yeah, was of free. course he was yeah of course he was. <laughs> he but yeah I, I, I think the debate about money yeah we wouldn't be anywhere without the money of course but but other sides spent money. Um, Man United yeah, spent money, and, and you guys have spent some. Big and what money. I admire about City, and why I don't have a Pepe. beat on it about, oh, don't get me started. <laughs> why I don't have an issue with Manchester City as much as I maybe had an issue with Chelsea when they did it, is because Manchester City have decided we're going to be the best. We're going to spend the money. We're going to become the best. But we're also going to do it by playing the best football. Yeah, yeah. We're not going to do a Jose Mourinho <laughs> and have all the money in the world and bring in any player that you want and, just and still it. park the bus yeah, and defend. Yeah. So for me, I have more admiration for Manchester City based it, yeah. on that reason. Um, and I think that's not just true of the Pep days. Pellegrini before him yeah, good, is good another one of him as well. Um, that played good football. Right, that brings us to the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, all the usual stuff. And check out Lawrence's channel as well. I'll leave that in the description. Uh, until next time, cheers.